here I am entering the Jaffa Gate. The Jaffa Gate is the gate that leads you into the Christian Quarter. Walking these streets is a challenge. It's very crowded, very narrow, and the shopkeepers are so good at pulling you into their shop. There is a lot to buy. A lot of junk, but you can also find a lot of neat stuff. You just have to be carefully selective and be prepared to spend significant time because they really want you to buy something. And the first price is always more dear than you would want to pay for any given item. The last thing you do is pay them what they tell you the first price is. It takes time to work a price that is more reasonable to you. I mean, you could go into one of these shops and spend an hour or two hours just for one item. You shouldn't enter just any shop that a shopkeeper is calling you out from. It could waste hours of your time. The first thing that I bought was this Jerusalem cross. It's a silver pendant with Jerusalem stamped on the back of it, so it's a neat piece. The five crosses represent the five wounds of Jesus, the two hands, the two feet, and the spear in the side. This cross was first popularized in the 10th century by the Dukes of Normandy. A century later it was used as the arms of Godfrey, who was the first king of Jerusalem. It was then often depicted on Crusader gear. So the way I came about this purchase was being in Jerusalem for just a few hours and not really having my travel legs, I was searching for the entrance to a tour that I wanted to go on. A shopkeeper noticed that I was looking around and he got me into his shop. He wanted to, me to buy things, I wanted to know where the entrance to the tour was, and he knew where it was, but he wanted me to buy something before I left. So he started showing me everything he had, and I spotted this Jerusalem cross and I liked it. So I thought, if I just buy this thing, he'll tell me where the entrance to the tour is. We haggled over the cross, he started at 250 shekels I believe, and I ended up after 10 minutes agreeing on 100 shekels, which translates to $25. So it wasn't a bad buy, I, I could have probably got it for less if I wanted to spend the time on it. But I needed that information on where that, um, that tour, the beginning of that tour was. So I gave him the 100 shekels and he promptly told me where the beginning of the tour was. My next purchase was made right after emerging from Hezekiah's tunnel. This is a narrow tunnel about a mile long and is knee high full of the running water from the Gihon Spring. I was soaked up to almost the crotch of my pants. I had water shoes that I had taken off and put them in the sun and after putting my hiking boots back on, the shopkeeper from the antique store right there came over to me and beckoned me into his shop. So I go in thinking that I was only going to spend a little time while my water shoes dried. Knowing the kind of prices that I was going to see in the shop, I wasn't planning on buying anything. So I'm in there browsing around and he's showing me all kinds of antiquities. And I have to say, they, they did capture my imagination. So as we talked, I found myself haggling over various pieces. So I made a buy. It was two pieces. The first being a beautiful oil lamp dated 200 BC from the Hasmonean era. The second is a vase made around the time of King David, approximately 1000 BC. So the vase is about 3,000 years old. The oil lamp is over 2,000 years old. The price we agreed on was $400. We started at $600, I, I believe. I did get certificates of authenticity for each piece. So after being in Jerusalem for a few days, I started to get some haggling chops. And for my next buy, while well, I was walking down the street here, when a shopkeeper, he asked me as I was passing by, what is that thing on your camera? I walked back to him and I said, it's a microphone. And he said, oh, well, what do you need that for? 
So we started talking about my camera, and as we were talking, he slyly guided me into his shop. And then he's like, what do you want? What do you see that you like? Well, you know, I, I was thinking about getting a shofar. So I said to him, a shofar. He didn't have any shofars, so he went next to the, uh, to the next shop, and he grabbed a few, and he brought them back. The one that I liked, he was asking $250. So I, I told him, no way am I paying $250 for it. So he would grab something else, drop the price of the show for, but add in another piece to try to like sweeten the, the pot. But at the same time, he was just confusing the negotiation because it was the, the money was changing and up and down, and he was trying to configure the deal for his best possible sale. We ended up haggling for an hour and a half. And at the end, he told me, you know, you're a nice guy, but, but you're tough. I've spent one and a half hours on you, and I'm just getting tired. So then I offered him $100 for, for the, the shofar. And I said, I have $100 in American, and we agreed. So this is me as a proud owner of a Jerusalem shofar. And this is what I will sound like after 10 years of shofar lessons. You like seeing my shop chair? No, no Where thanks. Where are you from? Oh, New Jersey. No, I, I'm doing something. That interaction sounds like I am done with buying, but not quite. There is something else that I am in the market for. Coming out of the Holy Sepulcher, the second shop out, all I had to do was make eye contact, and the shopkeeper is jumping in front of me, changing my direction towards his shop. I enter. He proceeds to show me things I don't want and my eyes glaze over until I saw exactly what I wanted. He said, what are you looking for? And I said, I've been looking for holy water and I see exactly what I want. He actually had a really nice kit with holy water in it. He picked it up and he started reading it and doing what he could to sell me. I was already sold, but I couldn't show it. We haggled about that for probably an hour. And I finally got it at the price I wanted to pay. And I got it for 100 shekels. He wanted 280 shekels, so I got it for about the third of the price that we started at. That was about $25. It's hand-blown glass. It's really nicely done. A real artisan did it. Very nice crosses secured in the top of the glass. I just knew that I wanted it as soon as I saw it. Spitzi, 
said summit and I turned around and looked at him and I said summit New Jersey he said yeah so I went over and talked to him and he lived in summit he I think he has family there now and the guy is a Bedouin or his family is is Bedouin so I go over and talk to him and I start looking at his stuff and it's it's beautiful leather products and he said he makes them his family makes them in Hebron so I had been through Hebron years ago and that's where Abraham is buried. So I'm looking at the stuff and I'm, I'm thinking, man, this is really amazing. It's all made with camel leather. So I ended up making a deal with him, but he was showing me something that he wanted $280 for. And I'm like, I, I, I can't pay you $280 for this thing. So we actually ma made a deal for $70. I thought it was a pretty good deal. I don't even need the, the, the piece. But he said, he said, I'll give you my information. You know, I gave you this thing at a really good price. When you need something, make sure you call me. I can describe and show you pictures of everything that we're making. So I did. So that was a piece that I, that I bought because I was infatuated with it. Well, that's it for now. The last thing I want to show you is just a short clip of a really cute kid that's kind of hiding in a doorway. There's a lot of cute kids there. They're all pretty cute when they're small. When they all grow up, it, not so much. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to show you this, uh, this last little piece and that's it.